Now, mention the names Carnegie and Rockefeller and the word philanthropy comes to mind. Rich Americans, well, they've got a proud history of charitable giving. The latest in a long line are, of course, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. But they're not alone. To date, more than 100 other billionaires have signed up to their giving pledge. Earlier this year, the likes of Richard Branson and Malaysia's Vincent Tan also put their billions on the line. It's well-intentioned giving, but is that enough? With me now is Jacob Leaf, the co-founder of the education charity Ubuntu, Roy Head, CEO of Development Media International, and James Kahn, an entrepreneur and former dragon from Dragon's Den, a program which puts business ideas to the test. Before we start, let's just take a look at James in action. Looking for a £170,000 investment in their takeaway food business, delivering traditional British favourites to consumers' doors. Instead of pizzas, curries and noodles, it's cottage pie, lamb casserole and bread and butter pudding. James Kahn liked the cuisine, but found the takeout setup costs far less to his taste. I've run a retail business in food and for £40,000 I could never open an outlet. I don't know where you're opening this shop, but, you know, even in Bombay, that would be a challenge. Deborah. Well, let's, uh, <laughs> let's get on with this. I mean, even the other <laughs> dragons were, were shocked. shocked. Now, <laughs> are you as unkind to the, to the kind of charities you deal with as you were with that, that, that poor George, hapless they people? they say I'm the nicest dragon. I'm the really kind one. <laughs> Listen, seriously, though, I mean, do you need to bring that kind of rigour if you are as you are? a rich person who's interested in philanthropy? I, I don't think it's about rigour, George. I think it's about responsibility. I think when you are somebody who's, you know, made his money and you've had to work hard for it, I think you have to take the same responsible attitude when you're giving. And it's about finding organisations that you trust, that had good governance, good controls, that are transparent, that can show the entrepreneur the principle of value for money because everybody wants to know that for every pound of my hard-earned money that I donate, how much of that pound actually gets to the cause that you're promoting. So I think, you know, you, you showed on your clip the likes of Bill Gates. I think Bill Gates is one of the most recognised individuals on the planet who absolutely believes in value for money giving. Yeah, now, you say you want uh, you know, every dollar, every pound uh, that, that you give to make something. Now, Jacob, I, if I'm not mistaken, Ubuntu, the, the organisation that, that you deal with, I mean, you're actually suggesting something more, that for every dollar or pound or South African rand that is given, you have a sort of multiplying effect. Oh, that's correct. I think we understand that raising a child takes time. Too often, uh, philanthropists uh, want us to create miracles in a 12-month grant cycle. And you can't raise a child in 12 months. And that's something I think we all know deep down in our own hearts with our own children. But when we think of the other, um, it changes a bit. Too often, I'm asked the question, well, how can I reach more children for less money? And we believe that's the wrong question to be asking. Rather, what does it take to actually change a child's life? Yeah, but, but what you're actually saying, I mean, it, when, when you promote... Um, your organization is give us a dollar and do you know what the returns are eight dollars or something you sure. get how, how do you make that kind of calculation? I can see how someone like James could make it in a business I mean you see it, but you know in the profit line, but how do you make that? Calculation? Sure, we've been uh, we work with children from the cradle straight through to career um, So we follow these children from the age of zero straight through we then take a child who graduates our program, graduates from university, enters the job market, looks at what that child um, is earning, what they're contributing back to society, and then compare it to a child who's in our community, not in our program, and what they actually drain from society. And the differences are remarkable. We have an incredibly expensive model in the sense that it costs a lot to change a child's life, upwards of 3,000 pounds per child in South Africa. But we believe it's, and we've proven that it's more, it costs more not to make that investment than to invest in the child and, that way. And Rawhead, what's interesting about your work is that actually it's not really necessarily so much about how much you, you, people give. It's about information, isn't it? So just give us a brief example of the kind of work you do. Well, what we do is, is we do mass media campaigns which is designed to improve people's knowledge and change their behaviours. And these are life-saving behaviours like, such as giving a child food and water when it's got diarrhoea or using a mosquito net. And we calculate that for, for every, it costs about five dollars 
to add a year of he healthy life to a child. So actually, we're at the cheapest end, almost the opposite end of the spectrum from Jacob. You know, in terms of the amount of lives saved per dollar, we, you know, that's how we market ourselves to philanthropists. And I think that you know, philanthropists have to make a choice. You know, s sometimes they will be attracted by really investing in, uh, you know, in depth in a child, uh, just as, the, uh, as Jacob's Foundation does. As somebody who, who puts money in a tin, or you know, they, they may, people have a, a certain amount of generosity to give over their lives, so they may. You know, adopt a child. That may be what they do with their lives. On the other hand, they may want to, you know, give a thousand dollars and give the greatest good for the greatest number. And, and James, if I'm not missing, you two have a relationship, don't you? you? Yes. Yes. Now, now, I would argue, many people would argue that actually the kind of thing that Jacob's organisation is doing is something the South African government should doing. What on earth is a rich man from Britain doing? doing something that South African taxpayers ought to be dealing with. I mean, this is, we're talking about education here. We are, and I think it's not about whose responsibilities, in my eyes. I think, as an individual, we all have a responsibility to the global community that we are now living in. And I think entrepreneurs like me do not think from a parochial perspective, you know, I want to be able to have the opportunity of giving something back. And I believe that Jacob has a, as a product that he's very passionate about, where he genuinely is making a difference. And I think if you're looking to make a difference in somebody's life, to me, does it really matter if that life is in South Africa, India, Pakistan, England? I don't think it matters. I think what matters is, are you making enough of a difference? And I think Abutu, in what it does in Africa, is absolutely making a difference. And, and Jacob, OK, so perhaps, let's put in, James might be an exception. Do you get situations where... Where, where these rich people, actually they're interested in, in, in a kind of vanity project, they want their name all over it. Uh, we do, <laughs> um, and we deal with that. Uh, but the, the truth it? is that the majority of our uh, supporters are more concerned with seeing a return on their investment. And we have to quantify that, and if we can show that, um, our investments increase. Okay, I, w I just want to come back quickly to you, Roy. Is there a danger that the, the, the rich guys want to kind of reinvent the wheel? They want to set up their own projects they, where, where there are lots of people doing good work already? I, I, I think there is that danger. And I think there, I was at a recent philanthropy conference in, in, in California, and they're really taking this, this whole philanthropy business to, to an extreme now. They're, they're, that they're looking for the most cost-effective ways. And I think any philanthropist has to balance you know, risk, as in inventing, investing in something new, and, uh, such as us. So we, we were utterly dependent upon philanthropists for our, for, for our funding. We, had a, a, we came up with a way that we thought was the most cost-effective way of saving children's lives, but it didn't fit into the established donors' way of looking at things. So it was the Wellcome Trust and the, and the founders of the Lonely Planet Travel series that, that actually okay. invested in us. We're going to have to leave there. Roy Head, Jacob Leaf, James Kahn. Thank you, George. Thank you all thank you for being you. with us.